Hi everyone and welcome back to another DaVinci Resolve tutorial and today we're taking a look at uh, green screens. Have you been working with green screen in Resolve? Have you run up against any problems? Well today we're going to take a look at uh, what I believe to be the best tool in DaVinci Resolve to work with green screen backgrounds. I say best because there are several different approaches you can take, several different plugins that you can get and uh, even over here in your effects palette I believe there's one but today we're going to take a look at what I believe to be the best and also cover some tips and tricks along the way. Every once in a while on one of my other channels here at YouTube I get the urge to do a green screen video so that we can do some funky things in the background and uh, just give the video a little bit more flair and interest and uh, so every once in a while I pull out the green screen and, and record a tutorial using the green screen background. But since I do it so rarely, almost every time I do, I have to figure out how to do it all over again. So what I'll probably end up doing is watching my own tutorial. I'm recording a tutorial today so that I can know what to do next time I do a green screen. Some of the problems that I ran up against, let's take a look at the first pass that I did, the first uh, export. I'll play it. If you look closely, you can see some white sparks coming off my shirt here, right around the edges of my shirt couldn't figure out what was causing that. Did a lot of research, watched a lot of videos. There's actually two things that were causing this. One is, I guess I hadn't lit my black shirt enough, and so there was some video noise. If I play it, you can probably notice that the video noise just along my shirt here. And that was contributing to the white sparks when we did the key. But the other thing that was causing the problem was I had applied my normal sharpening. When I went from log over to um, doing all the color correction, I usually add a, a little bit of sharpening to the video, and that was contributing to these white sparks. So if you are getting white sparks around your talent, <laughs> this is probably the, the reason why. You need to do some denoising on the clip, as well as uh, avoid applying any sharpening to your to your clip and that should solve that problem so with that let's go take a look at our a sample of our video before we do the keying what we're looking at here is an export where i've uh, gone from log to rec 709 and uh, applied noise reduction to the shot and did not add any sharpening now, if you're not aware of how you can do noise reduction in DaVinci, I do have a video on that that shows you how to do that. It's DaVinci has an excellent tool on uh, reducing video noise in your clip. I'll put a link in the description below if you're not quite sure how to do that. But what we're looking at here is um, an export in ProRes. That's what I did uh, on my export. I put it out in ProRes 422 10-bit, and uh, that gives us a nice quality high quality render with the denoising uh, done and no sharpening so now we just need to do the key how do we do that the best tool i believe to work with is found over in the fusion tab and i know that some people that are maybe brand new to davinci are a little bit nervous about going over to the fusion tab but the steps that we're going to show you are quite easy don't worry so when you go over to fusion you'll probably see a setup like this where you've got your video uh, going out to your media out. What we want to do is apply a node, put a node in between these two where we can do our key. And it's real easy. You just have to bring your mouse up so it turns blue there, do a right click and go up to add tool. And the tool that we're looking for is called mat. And the mat that I have found to work the best is the Delta keyer. I think most Resolve editors agree that this is the best keyer to work with. So let's click on that. You'll notice that uh, it shows up here in between the little node there. Just make sure that it is connected by grabbing it with your mouse, lifting it up and down, and it is connected. And now we can start with our key. And if we go over to our right-hand panel here with the inspector, we can see all of the tools here that are related to this Delta keyer. And by default, it goes right to the key that we want to start working with. And what we're going to do is go up and grab this eyedropper. Now you have to press down on your left key and keep your left mouse button pressed down as you drag this over. And uh, 
this is interesting, it's, it's showing me a nice big box there. What it's doing is taking a sample of the green screen in that whole area and kind of doing an average of it. But I'm not sure that that shows up like that every time. It might be remembering something I just did. If it's not showing up for you like that, it might be just by default coming over and selecting just one dot. What you need to do to define that larger area is hold down the command key on the Mac and draw that area uh, so that you get a much wider sampling of the green screen when you do this. All right, so we now have the first step of the key. If we were to go back to our video right now, uh, we are nicely keyed out and we've got our background. You'll notice I have a piece of video. If you didn't have the video there, it's just going to be black like that. But let's put our little background back in there and let's give it a play and see what we've got first uh, for our first pass. Well, it's pretty clean. I am seeing quite a white outline around my black shirt. I don't know if you can see that. So because we've denoised it and we haven't added the sharpening, we're not getting the sparks like we were getting the first time I tried this, but we're still getting quite a harsh white outline around my black shirt. So there's a couple things that we can do to make this look a little better. Let's go over back to our Fusion tab and let's change to Matte and let's move our threshold a little bit, uh, say, 122 on that end and let's bring this back to about 85 and then let's go over to fringe and let's take the fringe gamma back down to about 50 and let's take another look at it now and that looks a lot better now, one of the nice things about working with a green screen is that you can resize everything. I look too big and prominent in this shot, but then it's just a matter of selecting the video and uh, reducing it and moving it. That's maybe a bit small. Let's bring it up a little bit. All right, now there's one more problem that we need to take a look at and address. I don't know if you can notice it, but we're, we're getting a bit of noise up in this area here and over on the whole right side. And that's because I didn't uh, really take enough time to stretch my green screen so it was taut all the way across. We've got some wrinkles up here, so it's causing a lot of shadows. So this is going to cause problems in any key tool that you might use. What happens is when you go to play that, I don't know if you can notice up here, there's a lot of distortion up in the top left hand corner and also along the right hand side of the panel because we didn't have that lit properly or, or stretched out clean. But there's ways you, we can get around that. Probably the easiest is to use the crop tool because most of the problem was just on the edge of the right hand portion of the screen. We can uh, take our crop tool and just slide it across till we start uh, erasing the table there. And because I don't move around too much, it's not going to be a problem. But by doing this, we have eliminated all of the distortion that might have shown up on the right hand side. Now, the upper left hand corner is a little more difficult to deal with with the uh, crop tool. We see that as we start moving it across, that uh, we're, we're losing the mic. We could probably do some and then still move our video over a little bit. And that would take care of a lot of it up there. But there's another way that we can handle this. And that is, let's go back to Fusion again and create a garbage mat. How does that sound? A garbage mat. It's kind of a two-step process. We first of all want to select an area around the talent that we want to keep and then all the rest will just be part of an alpha channel that uh, will uh, just take the background rather than the green screen and how we do that is go up here in this strip of uh, menu options and select the polygon tool the polygon and just drag that down and it becomes a node and we don't have to connect it just yet just make sure it's selected 
which it usually is by default. And then we just go up to our screen and start drawing around the talent. And uh, if you're not familiar with how the polygon tool works, you just drag your mouse up and then click, drag it up, around, click, 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 and then come down and then just connect it back to the beginning point. And now we have selected an area. Right now, what it is going to do is select this area not to be keyed. Well, we want to change that. Go over to the polygon uh, inspector here, the tool, and click on the invert button. And now what that's telling DaVinci to do is key out just the area that is selected. Now let's go over to our polygon node here and with the right mouse button, click down and connect it to the Delta keyer. Now, when you release your right mouse button, you'll get an option pop-up menu here. What you want to do is choose the garbage mat. All right. And now when we go back, that area that we have uh, defined is the only area that is being green screened and the rest is just seeping through as though it's an alpha channel. And that works great. Now, because I don't move that much, we don't have to worry about my hands going outside of that defined area. All right. Well, that's pretty much our lesson for working with green screen, getting a good key with DaVinci Resolve. Hope that you enjoyed the lesson and uh, that you found the tips helpful. If so, I invite you to give it a like. That helps our channel grow. And go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video. That always helps us as well. And if you haven't already done so, we invite you to subscribe to our channel. And uh, we'll see you next time here at Learning Media Skills. So long for now.